ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له indeed all praise is to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we seek his guidance and we seek his assistance we seek refuge with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our own shortcomings and mistakes and whoever is guided by allah no one can misguide and whoever does not receive the guidance from allah no one can guide wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh and i bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except allah and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was his servant and his messenger my dear believers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us in the quran in surah ali imran a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون that all you who believe be conscious of allah be mindful of allah and in the aspect of awareness of our relationship to allah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and it should be done as is the right of allah and then you shall not depart from this world other than in a state of being a muslim other than in a state of someone that who has himself or herself committed to worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of our affairs until we de- depart from this world may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala count us among those that when we depart we are in submission to allah alone amen my brothers and sisters this this life that we live we there are ex- life expectations right someone will live 80 years or 100 years but we see in in the world that we live in you know young people babies middle age adults old you know it's the time of departure for each and every one of us we do not know no doctor can tell us when is your date no only it is with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what we just saw happened in miami building collapsed at middle of the night people were sleeping in their apartments this is what life is my brothers and sisters really that we do not know when the time will come so it's a reminder for all of us that the life that we have we live in our full understanding and our awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in doing whatever we can our best to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be always prepared and ready for our day and our time which may come at any moment we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who are still buried you know may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for the firefighters to take them out and those who are you know injured may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them quick recovery today in in america muslim organizations are have announced that today in our jumaat we will talk about the issue of muslims in china and especially the uighur muslims of china So it's a national khutbah for to remind ourselves the atrocities that are taking place in China and how Muslims are suffering and as American Muslims what can we do for them When we think about Muslims in China and I think many of us will probably share with me in these feelings that we have heard that, that there are Muslims in China but we didn't know how many muslims what kind of muslims what do they practice and how free are they in their practicing of islam and their faith there are different numbers of muslims in china it varies from 23 25 million to as much as 40 million muslims 
And there are several different ethnicities of Muslims in China. The Uyghur Muslims, which are mainly in this Xinjiang province or Xinjiang province, are estimated to be around 11 million. And out of these 11 million Muslims, about 1 million of them are in concentration camps. A little less than 10%, right? So think about it, that about 10% of the population, and this is what is now known because there are no real numbers that are coming out from China. And it is the investigative work of journalists who use satellite imageries and different ways in extracting that information that what is happening in these concentration camps and what is the number of people that are put in these concent concentration camps. Over one million, which is reported in about 85 concentration camps which are now known and reluctantly accepted by Chinese that yes, we have these institutions, but they call them as educational institutions. Because these 10, 1 million people do not know how to live as Chinese. So they are being educated how to be real Chinese to live in China. So the atrocities that are taking place, the tortures that are taking place, and there are very gruesome details that are sometimes coming out, that organs are being harvested, that their kidneys are being taken away and sold different ways that torture is being practiced in these camps. And unfortunately, the world is silent. And last week when we talked about the Juneteenth, that how America celebrated the ending or emancipation of slavery in 1865, but we are still seeing that there is economic slavery still in this country and in the world. There are injustices which are still happening in this nation and around the world. And the world today may not call or see the slavery that it was used to be. But if you have one million people put in concentration camps, what other name can we give to that except that it is also a modern day slavery? That you have forced people and put them in these camps because they are uneducated according to your standards or because they are different ethnicities or they are different color or they practice a different faith. And this is what my brothers and sisters that we are witnessing and it is happening today. You can say that People in Gaza have their right to have their own government and all, but it is a modern day slavery. When you not, do not have the right to live, when you do not have right to have your economy, when you do not have the right to protect yourself, give it any other name, but it is a slavery. And it is happening today in this world. But then we talk about, and we see, unfortunately, the Muslim world has practically abandoned. Talk about Palestine or Kashmir or other places, and now Muslims in China. And what really saddens that when we encourage individually, we encourage each and every one that put your trust in Allah. Do not be afraid. Work hard. Allah is a razaq. Allah is the one who provides. But these Muslim leaders, these Muslim places, 
Unfortunately, they're all scared from the economic repercussions that can happen if they stand for the rights of Uyghur Muslims. And that is what is really disturbing and saddening that when it comes to putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to understanding that whatever we have is from Allah and whatever we don't, it is also by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we mean must not be afraid of standing up for what is just and what is right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and have mercy upon us. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah سبحانه وتعالى describes the relationships of believers in this ayah of Surah Tawbah. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرحمهم الله إن الله عزيز حكيم الله سبحانه وتعالى says the believers men and women are protectors of one another they are awliya of one another they are guardians to one another they are comrades to one another they enjoin what is just and forbid what is wrong. They observe regular prayers, practice regular charity, and obey Allah and His Messenger. Upon them, Allah will pour His mercy, for Allah is exalted in power and wise. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in a beautiful way described our relationship toward one another. Today in our community, if we have brothers and sisters coming from 50 or plus different places and cultures, we all come together as brothers and sisters. We stand next to each other. We pray together. We praise Allah together. We share our love and affection for each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if any one of you is saving, facing difficulties or harm, it is my duty and obligation to stand with you at the time of difficulty and stand with you when it is time for ease and comfort. This is our relationship. This is what makes us an Ummah of Muhammad So as I am reminding myself and all of us about the atrocities that our Muslim brothers and sisters are facing Uyghur Muslim brothers and sisters in China. I'll share with you just one example. And this is the testimony which was recently given by a Muslim, Uyghur Muslim woman. And these concentration camps, my brothers and sisters, male, female, young, old, they are putting everyone in these concentration camps. And this sister who was in this camp for 60 days, she was brave enough to give the testimony where she said that while they were beating me, I cried out, Ya Allah. This made them beat me even more, mocking me, saying, go and find your God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is witnessing all of that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the judge. 
But our role and our responsibility, my brothers and sisters, is that as we Muslims in America, we have our cell phones, we can make these calls. Sometimes we feel that, you know, things do not happen. I alone, what can I do? But let us fulfill our responsibility that I will make this call to my congressman or congresswoman. I'll make this call to see that if there are changes that can take place by our government when it comes to relationship with China, pressurizing them, asking them to make these changes. And make a call to the country that you have come from. Call them and ask, the, leave a message, call them and ask them, what are, is, what are you doing for our brothers and sisters in China? Let us make these efforts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has given us whatever potential and capacity to do, do it. If you use social media, raise the awareness about it. If you are able to write columns or whatever, do whatever you can to raise awareness about these atrocities that are happening about our brothers and sisters in China. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and have mercy upon us. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma inna kanta wahab. Allahumma aghfir al-mu'minin wal-mu'minat wal-muslimin wal-muslimat al-ahyai minhum wal-amwaq. Ya Allah, we ask you with all of your beautiful names to make it easy for our brothers and sisters in China. Ya Rabbul Alameen, we ask you to relieve them from their pain and suffering. Ya Rabbul Alameen, grant them freedom. Ya Rabbul Alameen, grant them freedom so they can practice Islam, they can practice their deen without any fear, without any prejudice, without any injustice. Rabbana faqfir lana dhunubana wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tawafana ma'al abrar. And lastly, my brothers and sisters, starting inshallah July 16th, that will be the first Juma from July 16th that we are changing the timings of Juma from 4 to 3. So especially those of you who come for 11, it will remain at 11 a.m. Then the second Juma will be 12.15 and then 1.30. So we are from four Jumas, we are coming back to three Jumas and inshallah starting after July 15, we will not require that you come with your mask. If you want to do so, protect yourself because of whatever your health reasons, do so. But we will not um, enforce it in the masjid. And also, inshallah, you will not have to bring your own prayer rugs. We'll stand, inshallah, next to each other. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all safe and healthy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from, from all evil. Dibadullah rahimakumullah. Inna Allah yamuru bil adl wal ihsan. Wa itai dil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Aqim as-salam.